let's okay let's look at simplifying algebraic fractions uh, so x plus 4 over 3 plus 2x plus 1 over 3 the first thing to do is look for the lowest common multiple of of 3 and 3 and that is 3 we draw our line we have 3 underneath and we do four sets of brackets with the plus sign in the middle and we write x plus 4 in here 2x plus 1 in there and we say 3 goes into this 3 one time and 3 goes into this 3 one time we multiply all of that out and simplify to get 3x plus 5 over 3 3x minus 2 over 4 plus 5x plus 6 over 4 so again the lowest common multiple of 4 and 4 is 4 we draw our line 4 underneath our two sets of brackets plus sign plus sign two sets of brackets write what we see here in the first bracket there write what we see here in this bracket here and we say 4 goes into 4 one time 4 goes into 4 one time multiply all that out and we get uh, 3x minus 2 plus 5x plus 6 all over 4 so we just bring our like terms together to get 8x plus 4 over 4 Okay, so we have now 2x plus 1 divided by 3 plus x plus 4 over 2. Now here the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. That's the lowest number into which both 3 and 2 will go equally. So we draw our line with our lowest common multiple 6 written here. Set up our two sets of brackets. It's kind of two sets of brackets per term. We have our plus sign. Uh, we write our 2x plus 1 in there and our x plus 4 in here and we say 3 goes into 6 two times and 2 goes into 6 three times and we multiply uh, that out so that we get just uh, clear this okay, we multiply that out uh, so that we end up with 7x plus 14 uh, over 6 okay so now, uh, 2x minus 1 over 6 plus x minus 3 over 4. So the lowest common multiple of 6 and 4 is 12. So we draw our line, lowest common multiple underneath. There's two terms. We have two sets of brackets for that first term, two sets of brackets for this, and the plus sign in the middle. Uh, we write 2x minus 1 in there and x minus 3 in there. And we say 6 goes into 12 twice, 4 goes into 12 three times. Multiply all that out to get 7x minus 11 over 12. So using the quad formula, solve two decimal places x squared plus 2x minus 5. The first thing to do is to rewrite our equation and remember that the coefficient of the x squared with its sign is our a value. Uh, the number and sign between the x squared and the x is the b value and the number between the x and the equal sign is the c value. So we write a is 1, b equals 2, c equals minus 5. We plug all of those values into the formula remembering that x will have two values where x is minus 2 plus all of this and x is minus 2 minus all of this so you can set up your calculator using bubbles to solve those problems and it's the same for this question here where we just we have our equation so we know that a is always to the left of the x squared b is between the x squared and the x and c is between the x and the equal sign so be very clear about that set your calculator up for bubbles and make sure that you get two uh, possible solutions for x where it's x is equal to 4 plus all of this and x is equal to 4 minus all of that okay so look at this one 4x squared plus 3x equals 5 now we can't attempt to solve this until we set every uh, thing in the equation to 0 so we re re rewrite the equation so that it's equal to 0 so that gives us 4x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0 now that we have that, we can simply uh, find our a value to the left of x squared, our b value and its sign between x squared and x, and our c value between x and the equal sign. So a equals 4, b equals 3, c equals minus 5, plug it into your calculator, you get two solutions for x. Same again with this one, 3x squared plus 5x equals 3. Can't do anything until we rewrite it so that it's all equal to 0. So it's 3x squared plus 5x, this comes over to be minus 3 is equal to 0. Now we can look to find A, B and C. Once we know what they are, put them into your bubbles in the calculator and get two values for X, 0.47 and minus 2.14.
Now let's look at algebraic division. So we have 3x minus 1 into 3x squared minus 22x plus 7. So we say 3x goes into 3x squared x times. We say x by 3x is 3x squared. And x by minus 1 uh, gives us minus x. So we have to change the signs of this, and this becomes plus x, so they'll cancel. So minus 22x plus x gives us minus 21x, bring down our 7 plus 7. So now we say 3x into minus 21x goes minus 7 times. Minus 7 by 3x is minus 21x, and minus 7 by minus 1 is plus 7. So we change the sign of these two, and they'll both cancel. And it's the same uh, principle for all of these uh, division problems. But just always remember that if you're faced, this is very important, if you're faced with a problem like x minus 5 uh, divided into x cubed minus 19x minus 30, note that there's no x squared term. So, so we need to add one in and we do that by just simply rewriting x minus 5 into x cubed plus 0x squared minus 19x minus 30 and that will solve for you always. So if you're missing an x squared term or an x term uh, then just add in plus 0x squared or plus 0x before you, you attempt to solve the algebraic division. Okay let's look at using simultaneous equations to solve problems. So three chocolate bars and four chocolate eggs weigh 465 grams Three chocolate bars and two chocolate eggs weigh 315 grams. Create two equations using the above information to find the weight of one chocolate bar and one chocolate egg. Okay, so the solution is we're looking to find the weight of a chocolate bar and the weight of a chocolate egg. So we let x equal the weight of one chocolate bar and y equal the weight of one chocolate egg. So we rewrite this equation here that three chocolate bars, so three by the weight of a chocolate bar plus four by the weight of a chocolate egg all weighs four six five and three chocolate bars plus two eggs or the weight of two eggs all weighs 315 uh, grams so we have two equations we need to solve we're going to nail the y so we need to multiply this lower line by two so that becomes four y so that we can cancel with the four y above and that gives us uh, the solution here. So we have 3x plus 4y is 4, 6, 5, and then this line multiplied by 2 gives us 6x uh, plus 4x is 6, 30. We change the sign so we can add and cancel. Uh, so our x value is 55, so that means chocolate bar weighs 55 grams. And we put x is 55 into this equation here, so we find that y is 75 grams. Therefore, one chocolate bar uh, weighs 55 grams, and one chocolate egg weighs 75 grams. A bag contains 34 coins, all either 5 cents or 10 cents coins. If the value of the money in the bag is 2 euros 40, find how many of each coin uh, the bag contains. So the first hint we get is to convert 2 euros 40 to cents. Okay, So we have to find how many of each coin the bag contains. So we'll, let x, we'll let x equal the number of or how many 5 cent coins in the bag. And we'll let y equal the number of, or how many, 10 cent coins in the bag. We know there's 34 coins in the bag in total, so x plus y must be equal to 34, i.e. the number of 5 cent coins plus the number of 10 cent coins gives us the total number of coins in the bag is 34. And also we can say that 5x plus 10y equals 240, i.e. the number of 5 cent coins, x, multiplied by 5 cents, uh, plus the number of 10 cents coins, y, multiplied by 10 cents, uh, all adds up to 240 cents. So we solve these simultaneous equations, uh, simultaneous equations, simultaneously, sorry, and we get the, the fact that there's 25 cent coins, x is 20, and there's 14 10 cent coins, y is 14. I'm not going through this because you should know how to do this now. Uh, naming the y and changing the signs and cancelling and all of that. Okay. Okay, here's another problem. Uh, a person has 60 euros made up of 1 euro and 50 cent coins. He has 78 coins altogether. If the number of 1 euro coins is x and the number of 50 cent coins is y, find x and y. So we let x equal the number of 1 euro coins, let y equal the number of 50 cent coins. We know that uh, the number of 1 
euro coins plus the number of 50 cents coins gives us 78 coins in total. That's here. And we know that the number of 1 euro coins uh, and the number of 50 cents coins adds up to 60. Okay, because 60 euros in the bag, uh, we have a number of 1 euro coins and a number of 50 cent coins. They will all add up to 60. So we have our two equations, x, x plus y equals 78 and x plus a half y equals 60. Uh, so we can multiply the lower line by 2. Uh, so that gives us x is 42 and y equals 36. So we have 42. Uh, but, uh, sorry, it's not, uh, 42 1 euro coins. 1 euro coins. And we have 36. 50 cent coins. The total of those uh, giving us 60 euros in total in the bag. Now let's look at rearranging formula, but before we do that, we're often given formulas and the values of the variables within the formulas. So here, if v equals a h over 3, find v with a is 12 and h is uh, 4. So there's our solution there. Uh, S equals ut plus half a t squared. Find s when uh, use 10, t is 5. So we just type in what we see into our calculator and s is 79. Here we have a is h over 2 multiplied by a plus b. There's the values. Pop them in with your calculator. Use the fraction button on the calculator. That's a great button. Uh, and that will make sure, and your brackets in the right place. And that will make sure that you use the formula correctly following the BIMDAS rules, the calculator will do it for you. So get com comfortable with your calculator, uh, helping you to get solution to these type of problems. So now here's the rearranging one. Given that t equals a, b over 6 plus c, find t when the values are there. So you plug those in, that gives you 40. But now this time rearrange this so that b is the subject to the formula. So let's consider what's happening to b. Well, it's been multiplied by a, it's been divided by 6, and c is being added to it. So that's what's happening. So we're going to do the opposite in our solution. We're going to take uh, c from both sides. We're going to multiply all the terms by 6, and we're going to divide all the terms by a. So if I rewrite this equation here, uh, but first of all taking c from both sides, I have t minus c equals a b over 6 plus c minus c. So these c's will cancel. So that gives us t minus c equals a, b over 6. Now I'm going to multiply all terms by 6, so 6 times t minus 6 times c equals a, b over 6 times 6 over 1, but those 6's will cancel, so I have 6t minus 6c equals a, b. Then I'm going to finally divide all terms by a. So 6t minus 6c over a is the same as a, b over a, but they'll cancel. So 6t minus 6c over a is equal to b. Plug these values in and you get an answer. b is 13.2 or 13 and one fifth. Okay. The time taken t in minutes to complete my homework consists of 15 minutes to get my books organised and then 40 minutes to do each assignment A. Write down a formula making t the subject. Well, the time t will be 15 minutes plus 40 times A, the number of assignments. So if I have one assignment, it's going to take me 15 minutes to get it together plus 40 minutes to do the one assignment. If I have two assignments, it's going to take me 15 minutes to get my act together plus 40 by 2 uh, which would be 80 minutes to do the assignments. And just here's an extra bit for rearranging the formula here. It's very important. It came up at Christmas. It comes up in the junior cert. If I have a formula uh, like P equals a half EF squared, so we've never considered what happens if we have a term that's squared, and I need to rewrite it in terms of F, that term that is squared. What do I do? Well, let's rewrite the formula in terms of F. So let's think about what's happening to F. Well, first of all, it's been squared. It's been multiplied by E and it's been divided by 2, or, or multiplied by half. Whatever way you want to look at it, it's the same thing. I like to say it's been divided by 2. Okay, so, so we're, going to, we're going to multiply all terms by 2. 
Then we're going to divide all terms by e, and then we're going to get the square root of all terms. Okay. So if we have p equals a half e of squared, uh, we multiply this by 2, and we multiply this by 2, or 2 over 1. So that 2 will cancel with that. So we have 2p is equal to e f squared. Now I'm going to divide all terms by e. So I'll have 2p over e equals e f squared uh, over e. They'll cancel, so I'll have 2p over e equals f squared. And now I need to get the square root of all terms. So I'll get the square root of f squared and the square root of 2p over e. So the square root of f squared is f, and we leave the square root of 2p over e as is. So that's the answer. That's the formula rewritten in terms of f. f is equal to the square root of 2p over e. Okay, let's look at some factorising by grouping. So 2ac minus 4ad plus bc minus 2bd. So we'll just uh, put brackets around the first two terms, plus or and brackets around the second two terms. We'll look for our uh, highest common factor of 2 and 4, and it's 2, and of ac and ad, and it's a. So I'll bring that 2a outside and divide each of these terms by 2a, and I get c minus 2d in there. The highest common factor here is 1, numerically, and b, uh, alphabetically, so I've plus b, so this is a positive here, and that becomes positive here, so it's plus b, and I divide both these terms by that, and I get c minus 2d, so my standout term is c minus 2d, that appears twice, and my other term is this 2a plus that b here. What about a n minus 5a minus 5b plus b n, so I'll just put brackets around the first two, plus or and brackets around the second two and mind the sign here, okay? Uh, so I look out for my standout term numerically here, uh, uh, sorry, highest common factor is 1 and alphabetically is A, so A divides into these two terms n minus 5 times. I bring out my my highest common factor here, uh, the number numerically is 1, alphabetically is, uh, is B, but remember to bring out the minus sign. So I have minus b, and I divide minus 5b by minus b, and plus bn by minus b. Just be, be careful there, but the sign of this first term always pops out here. Okay? Uh, so, and I've written this bit in here just to take care with my cancelling, okay? To know that uh, minus by minus gives me plus five and b cancels, so that I get plus five. And here plus divided by minus gives me minus and the b's cancel and I just get n there. But you can see that I have a times n minus five minus b by five minus n, so I have to fix this. So I can multiply these three terms by minus one or change their sign. So I have a by n minus five plus b minus five plus n and I can just rewrite this so it looks like n minus five plus n minus five which looks like this, and I can see that, that that actually is my standout term, n minus 5, and this a plus that b is my other factor. 7y squared minus 21by plus 2ay minus 6ab. So I just put brackets around the first two and plus brackets around the second two. Now, at my uh, numerically, my highest common factor is 7, and alphabetically, it's, it's y. Uh, so I to, if I divide both terms by 7y, I get y minus 3b. And here, my highest common factor is 2a. Divide both of those, I get y minus 3b. y minus 3b is my standout term. 7y plus 2a is my other term. Let's look at difference of two squares. So difference of two squares, 4a squared minus 25b uh, squared. You know it's difference of two squares. This always has to be negative, And you have to be able to get the square root of the number and the letter. Okay, if you're given numbers and measures. And, but be careful, sometimes you might get minus 1b squared. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, uh, so that can be solved as well. Or you might just get minus 1. That, that, the square root of 1 is 1 again. So just be careful with that. But anyway, uh, we just write our two sets of brackets, our plus and our minus, and we write our square root of 4 is 2, of a squared is a, so we have 2a, 2a, of 25 is 5, and b squared is b, 5b, 5b. 36x squared minus 49y squared, well that's just 6x plus 9y by 6x minus 9y. 49a squared minus 4b squared, that becomes 7a plus 2b times 7a minus 2b. They're very, very straightforward, those ones. 
Uh, now let's look at uh, factorizing quads uh, using uh, Vinny's way. So here we've x squared plus 11x 11, 11 plus 30. So first thing is to find our guide number. 1 by 30 is 30. We look for the factors of 30 that will give us 11x using the same signs which are positive. And we can see that 5, 6 is the 30. So we've plus 5 plus 6. So we just simply write x over plus 5, x over plus 6. Nothing cancels there. So our factors are x plus 5 and x plus 6. Here again, 1 by 36 is 36. We look for two factors, which is the same sign, a positive sign, to make 20. So we have plus 2 plus 18. So we write x plus 2 and x plus 18. Nothing cancels. So we write what we see, x plus 2 by x plus 18. And here's an extra example here just to show you where things do cancel. We have 36x squared minus 7x minus 4. Now 36 by 4 is 144. And the 9 times 16 gives us 144. And plus 9 minus 16 gives us minus 7x. So I write 36x over plus 9 and 36x over minus 16. Uh, you know, and 9 will go in there once and will go in there four times. And uh, 4 will go in uh, here four times and will go in there nine times. So I'll actually have 4x plus, uh, 4x plus 1 from this one and 9x minus 4 from there just to show you that uh, you have to cancel sometimes. Okay, using factors to simplify algebraic fractions. Well, the idea is you have an algebraic fraction and you have to factorize above and below and then cancel any factors that appear above and below the line. So if we factorize 2x minus 6, we can take out the highest common factor numerically, which is 2, and that gives us 2 times x minus 3. And if we factorize this quad using Vinny's way, we would get x minus 3 by x plus 4. So if we rewrite 2x minus 6 over x squared plus x minus 12 in terms of their factors, we're going to cancel x minus 3 and x minus 3, and our answer is 2 over x plus 4. Here we're going to factorize 2x squared plus 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 and 2x minus 1. Well, we can't factorize this bit anymore, but we can certainly do this. This is can be the factors of that are 2x minus 1 by x plus 3. So our original sum rewritten in terms of its factors looks like this. They'll cancel. The answer is x plus 3. And here's the third and final one for this. Uh, 2x squared plus 11x plus 15 over 2x plus 5. So the factors of this uh, end up as 2x plus 5 and x plus 3 using Vinny's way. And we rewrite the original sum like this. In terms of its factors, 2x plus 5 by x plus 3 all over 2x plus 5, they'll cancel. So the answer for this one as well happens to be x plus 3. Now let's look at uh, linear inequalities. Minus 9, less than 2x plus 1, less than or equal to 7, where x is an element of the set of integers. So the solution, when we go to solve this, we need to first of all recognise, we're talking about integers, we're going to be using dots. And we have... Uh, this inequality here, which is uh, less than, uh, there's no equals dimensions there, so we won't dot the number, and this is less than or equal to, we will uh, uh, we will dot the number there, we'll, that'll become clear in a minute. But we rewrite our problem anyway to get going, and we take these two terms first, minus 9, less than 2x plus 1. Bring your 2x over, it becomes minus 2x, bring your 9 over, that way it becomes plus 9. I like the x's on the left. So we've minus 2x is less than 10. So we need to clean this minus 2x here. And we simply multiply all terms by minus 1, but we flick the sign the other way. So we end up with 2x is greater than minus 10. x is greater than minus 10 over 2. x is greater than minus 5. And then we take this side of the inequality. We say 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 7. 2x is less than or equal to 7 minus 1. 2x is less than or equal to 6 x is less than 6 over 2, x is less than 3. And then we have to recombine these two inequalities. So we write our x and we say it's less than or equal to 3 and it's greater than minus 5. Now, we draw our number line and we know we're kind of within the region of 3 and minus 5. Uh, but because this is it just says greater than minus 5. We won't dot the minus 5. We'll start by dotting the minus 4. And because x is less than or equal to 3, we will dot the 3. Okay, 
we will we do dot the number for the less than or equals to sign and we'll dot all the numbers in between. Okay. For less than or equal to 5x minus 6, less than or equal to 29, x is a natural number. So now we will use dots for this as well, and we have the inequality is less than or equal to, so we'll dot the numbers at the end. So we take this first part, we 4, uh, less than or equal to 5x minus 6, minus 5x less than or equal to minus 6 minus 4, minus 5x less than or equal to minus 10, so 5x is greater than or equal to 10. So we've multiplied this and this by minus 1 to change the signs, but we flick the sign. So x is greater than or equal to 10 over 5, x greater than or equal to 2. We'll take this bit of the inequality, 5x minus 6 less than or equal to 29, 5x less than or equal to 29 plus 6, 5x less than or equal to 35, x less than or equal to 7. So we can write this bit here, x less than or equal to 7, but we know that x is also greater than or equal to 2. That's that bit there, recom recombining. We know our number line's kind of going from 2 to 7, so we can draw our number line out. Uh, and we have x is less than or equal to 7, so we will dot the 7, because they're less than or equal to 7. And x is greater than or equal to 2, so we will dot the 2, and we'll dot every number in between. Now, look at this one. Minus 7, less than equal to 3x minus 1, less than, less than 14. X is a real number. We're going to use a really thick line. And we're talking about full dots or open dots. Well, where are we if we get this at the end, we'll use a full dot. And if we see that, we'll use an open dot. Okay, let's take this first half. Minus 7, less than equal to 3x minus 1. So, minus 7, uh, sorry, bring over the minus 3x. Uh, less than equal to minus 1 plus 7, but this becomes plus 7 over here. Minus 3x less than equal to 6. Get rid of that minus 3x by hitting it with a minus. Uh, all terms by minus 1. Before we do any divisions, we clean this always first. So we get 3x, flick the sign, greater uh, or equal to minus 6. x is greater than or equal to minus 6, so 3x greater or equal to minus 2. And here, with 3x minus 1 less than 14, 3x less than 15, x less than 15 over 3, x less than 5. So we write our x less than 5, but we know that x is greater than or equal to minus 2 as well. Okay, so x is less, so we're going from kind of minus 2 to 5, uh, but less is, x is less than 5, so we'll put an open dot over 5. It's not 5 anyway, it's less than 5, so that's why we've got an open dot. And x is greater than or equal to minus 2, so we'll put a full dot at minus 2, and we'll draw a really thick line in between. And finally, it's very important that sometimes you might get an inequality that looks like this, where there's a fraction involved. So you just have to be very careful. Uh, you might have uh, 4 less than or equal to 5x minus 6 over 2. If you do, then you cross-multiply, you treat this like an equal sign, uh, so that you have actually two fours or eight is less than or equal to five x minus six. Or you could have uh, an inequality with fractions that looks like something like this. Uh, let's say uh, so minus two less than or equal to half x minus three less than one. So be careful here with this one. Uh, first of all, we'll tease out this bit. So we've minus two less than or equal to a half x minus 3. Uh, so what we can do here is multiply all the terms by 2 to flatten this out. So we have minus 4 less than or equal to 2x. Sorry, less than or equal to x, sorry, minus 6. And then we can proceed to say minus x is less than or equal to minus 6 plus 4. Minus x is less than or equal to uh, minus 2. x is greater than or equal to to 2. And then we could take this side and that would look like a half x minus 3 less than 1. So now we'd multiply all terms by 2. So we get x minus 6 less than 2 x less than 8. And we could combine and so on. But just be careful uh, you know if you have uh, if you have you know, a fraction or a half of x, you multiply the three terms uh, by 2 to get rid of that fraction. Uh, and the same again here. 
where we could have x minus 3x1 but multiply 3 times just to get x, uh, x uh, without the fraction.